I'd now like to take time to congratulate the Adelaide Crows on their grand final win over the weekend and the whole AFL women's competition on a thrilling first season. I'm only a first-generation Victorian, with my family heritage being firmly South Australian, so of course I'm claiming that this week, given the Crows' win. My cousin Ian will be very pleased to hear me say that. It was a great game, and I'm floored by the skill of players like Aaron Phillips, an elite basketballer and just an astounding footballer. Watching the medal presentations to those premiership players gave me goosebumps. It represented so much after year upon year of watching the AFL Grand Final celebrations to see women on that dais this time. And all the pioneering women footballers that have come before this year's competition can claim their portion of the glory, and we thank them for paving the way. Women have been honing and developing this game for years, and some are lucky to be in the generation that has finally taken their place on the elite stage. It's inarguable that women's footy is here to stay. The season of the elite competition has been thrilling and it's drawn legions of fans to watch in person and on telly. I went along to my beloved Bulldogs' first game at Witten Oval. It was a beautiful late summer's night and the warm glow was enhanced when we beat Frio. Commiserations to my colleague Adam Bant, who was cheering his hometown Dockers that night. He was drowned out by the West's barracking for the red, white and blue. There was a big crowd there that night. This new league brought a refreshed fan base with it. And I was surprised and delighted to see the numbers of young people and groups of friends, men and women alike, and the young families with six-year-old girls with their favourite player's number on the back of their footy jumper, and they were hanging out for an autograph at the end of the game. We've come so far in the last decade, from when my sons were playing junior football, and the girls that they played with, though small in number, were often amongst the best players in the team. But once they got through the under-12s, well then it was, sorry love, you can't play anymore. Last Sunday morning, I rode my bike past one of the grounds they'd played at, JJ Holland Reserve in Kensington, and there were two women's games in full swing. While the AFL competition has been a breath of fresh air, we still have a long way to go in terms of how our women footballers and athletes across codes are recognised and compensated on an equal footing to their male counterparts. The average women's AFL wage is $8,500. The average male wage, $300,000. I went along recently to the Media, Entertainment and Arts Alliance's Game Changers Forum in Melbourne. It was a platform for an important conversation about women transforming Australian sport. We heard from the likes of Angela Pippos, Caroline Wilson, Ros Lanigan and Kelly Underwood, all women who live and breathe sport and play vital roles in our media landscape. We heard about the problems with our mainstream media. It's still male, pale and stale, said Angela Pippos, commenting on the white blokes dominating the sports media. Pretty reflective of the many other public spaces, wouldn't you say? It's unfortunate, but this is still the case. And Kelly Underwood noted that unlike women in sports media, Jared Waitley has never been rated out of 10 for an outfit on a red carpet. It's thanks to women like Angela and her colleagues, as well as the players and the other women's footy pioneers, that we have some reason for hope. Hope for women to take the field, to take the premiership dais and to take the commentary microphones in even greater numbers. This is their rightful place and we should celebrate them. This parliament has played a role in celebrating women's sport and has done so in a range of ways through the years. And to further that work, I've been pleased to have fruitful conversations with my parliamentary colleagues about the prospect of establishing a parliamentary friends of AFL women. I'll note that we will, of course, follow the proper avenues with the president, Mr President and the Speaker in due course, but we hope to have the support of our colleagues across the parliament. So congratulations again to all the teams who took the field in this first season of the AFL women's competition. It's been a blinder.